Well, one of the most spectacular discoveries of our generation is that information governs the biological world. Now, biological information exists in the cells of all organisms as this complex molecule called DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. This molecule, DNA, carries complex coded instructions for making an entire organism. Some DNA contains instructions for making proteins, like the machinery and, and that we've seen and, and material that make life possible. But only about 2% of the genomic DNA is, is code for, codes for proteins. The rest of it is regulatory and uh, developmental uh, related. <clears throat> And everyone today acknowledges, though, that DNA is information. This is not a contested assertion. Everyone acknowledges that DNA is information. Even Bill Gates says that, D that the gene is by far the most sophisticated program around. It is information. And as such, it, the fact that DNA is coded information causes it to stand as the single most powerful argument for intelligent design that exists. Because in all past human experience... Information has been found to come invariably from only one source, and that's an intelligent mind. When information was discovered in cells to be governing the processes in biological systems, it should have at least led to the hypothesis, uh, the theory that that information must have, might have also come from an intelligent mind, because that's how science is supposed to work, you see. You're supposed to use your past knowledge and experience to inform you about your observations and reach a conclusion. In all past human experience, we've only found information coming from one source, an intelligent mind. And yet, when they discovered information there in cells, there wasn't even a hint of an assumption that it might also come from an intelligent mind. Well, the amount of information packed into each cell is mind-boggling. Now, now, humans have 46 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes in each one of our cells, and our chromosomes range in size from 1.7 to 8.5 centimeters in length. Your smallest chromosome, 1.7 centimeters, your longest is 8.5 centimeters. If you take all of the chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, in one of your cells, it will form a single strand that's about six foot in length, six foot in length total. Well, the human body contains about... 60 trillion cells, 100 trillion cells total, but about 40% of those are bacteria. So there's about 60 trillion cells that are actually human cells with human DNA in them. And if you took all of those 60 trillion cells and you attached the DNA end to end, it would form a strand that's 67 million miles long. That strand would stretch to the moon and back, not just once or twice, but 140,000 times. If you take the DNA strands and all the cells in your body, it will go around the moon and mo moon it back 140,000 times. To illustrate this another way, the text that you see on this slide, the text on the right, is DNA sequencing data. The, uh, the model, the spinning model on your left, is a model of what the DNA helix looks like. It's like a ladder that's twisted in, into what we call a double helix. Well, each step or rung of that ladder is made up of one of four possible molecules called nucleotides that are abbreviated with the letters A, T, C, and G. Adenosine triphosphate, cytosine triphosphate, guanidine triphosphate, thymidine triphosphate. So we abbreviate these with the letters A, T, C, and G. And that's what you're seeing on the right is what sequencing data looks like. When a scientist determines the order of nucleotides that are on a strand of DNA, that's the data you get. Well, if each letter that you see there is equal to the letters in our alphabet, if we're wanting to make a comparison, an information comparison, if each letter there on that gene is equivalent to the letters in our alphabet, then the amount of information in one human cell would fill a thousand books. Letter per letter. The amount of information in one human cell would fill a thousand books. Or, if you took a little pinhead size pile of DNA it would fill 500 stacks of books reaching the moon or a single stack of books 93 million miles high. A little pinhead-sized pile of DNA. It's an incredible information compression system. Information, DNA, is information, 
And it is a powerful argument for intelligent design. If simple water molecules that form ice crystals exhibit magnificent structure, consider the design ingenuity behind large, complex molecules, such as DNA. DNA contains the blueprint for all life and is by far the densest information storage mechanism known in the universe. For example, the amount of information contained in a pinhead volume of DNA would fill a stack of books 500 times higher than from here to the moon. The program code and design of such an incredible system indicates a supremely intelligent designer. The evidence to me that just cries out that there's a God is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful, massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. And scientists know today that a language as a code only comes from an intelligence, and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out in the beginning, God created the universe. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it, thousands of different kinds, and each one of them is so complex, nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works, and encoded is the instruction manual it's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of 100 trillion cells. Furthermore, DNA is a three-dimensional molecule that is self-replicating. Each molecule is able to make an identical copy quickly and efficiently. The Lord has even programmed DNA to detect and correct replication errors. These sophisticated capabilities far exceed man's means. God has created the DNA molecule in such a way that it is self-correcting. There are special proteins called enzymes that go up and down the DNA molecule looking for and making repairs on a minute-by-minute, second-by-second basis. God created us with a DNA code that actually has what we call editase or editorial type enzymes. Just as an editor reads a newspaper or a book looking for mistakes, so God has created special enzymes that go up and down our DNA molecule repairing the mistakes in ways that are unbelievably complex. There are many examples in creation of, of things that demonstrate the biblical God. Uh, one would be in our very DNA. Our DNA has information in it. And there is a whole field of scientific study called information science, which studies how information originates, how it's transmitted, and so on. And one of the laws of information science says that information never originates by itself in matter, never spontaneously comes about. Anytime we trace uh, the copying of information back to its source, it always, it always comes back to a mind. And since we have creative information in DNA, that tells me that DNA comes from intelligence. It's not something that could possibly come about through millions of years of mutations and natural selection. That just won't work. Yet even the DNA molecule is simple compared to cells. All life consists of cells, and each cell functions as a miniature city. When we consider that a human body consists of trillions of cells working together as one unit, we should be in humble awe of our Creator's intimate care and perfect wisdom. It is a powerful argument for intelligent design, but what do evolutionists say? Where do evolutionists say all of this information came from? Well, they only have random chance processes and the law-like interactions of molecules to account for things, and, and so they invoke random mutations. Uh, 
The genetic code can be changed uh, by exposures to chemical mutagens. There are chemicals that if your DNA is exposed to those, it will change one of those nucleotides. UV bombardment it also, will also, DNA is an optically active uh, molecule. UV bombardment will also, could also create a mutation of, of your DNA. When the DNA is copied by your cell, it can copy it inaccurately, uh, leading to potentially a mutation. This is, uh, this is what evolution is invoke. That random changes to the genetic code, some originally magically created genetic code, random changes to this genetic code through time has allowed some lowly organism more simple than a bacteria to ultimately evolve up into and eventually to us. And this assertion by evolution is, is one of the most ludicrous things that they have ever put on the table. It's, and we just all know this is ridiculous in our gut. You cannot randomly change letters in a book and get a better edition of a book, a, a new edition of a book. You cannot randomly change computer code and get better computer code. You randomly change letters in a book or a computer code, you're going to destroy the information. That's what mutations do. They destroy the genetic code leading to genetic diseases and disorders. That's what happens. The interpretation that is most consistent with our observation and experience is that that information was created by an intelligent mind, by God. I mean, to claim that random mutations are responsible for information is nothing short of science fiction. I mean, that's literally what it is. The proposing something that is an affront to reason, it's an affront to common sense, and it's an affront to logic. That random mutations to complex code can create more code. Nothing but science fiction. Well, the fact is, there is overwhelming evidence of intelligent design in the biological world. Technologies has give, have given us a look at cells never before seen. These cells are not simple lumps of mucus, but are comp more complex than anyone of Darwin's day could have imagined. The discovery that information governs the biological world and, and molecular machines are responsible for cellular work should have led scientists to the conclusion that intelligent causation was responsible. But despite the over, <coughs> overwhelmingly powerful evidence of design found in the cell, a scientist that is committed to naturalism must refuse to acknowledge the obvious implications of these observations that the world was created. Francis Crick, shown here, was the co-discoverer of the DNA helix. He won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for working out the shape of the DNA molecule. Francis Crick said this, Biologists must constantly keep in mind that what they see was not designed, but rather evolved. It's not that you have to remind yourself every once in a while, because occasionally you stumble across something that's designed. There's so much evidence of design in the biological world, you have to constantly remind yourself that what you're seeing is not design, but instead evolved. Oh, the truth is that God has made the world with abundant evidence that it was created. But why can't these natural scientists see the truth? Paul speaks to this in Romans. He says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they knew there was a creator, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the sad state of natural science today. They simply refuse to acknowledge the truth of what they see and are willfully ignorant of the overwhelmingly obvious evidence of design discovered from our studies of life. Let me close out in a word of prayer. Father God, we, uh, we are humbled before you, Father God, to, with the knowledge and the recognition that, that such great work has been done, Father by you that's such tremendous designs and engineering and marvels of designs and engineering exist in the world that you have made for us father we are uh, thankful father that you have made this wonderful world for us father and when we look at the world around us we don't just see a 
place where we can live, we see your love poured out for us. We see beautiful things because you wanted to make the world pleasing for us. Pleasant smells and pleasant tastes and and beautiful and animals that we love so much. Father God, we thank you for this world. And we, we, we humble ourselves before you, Father, as sinners. Recognizing, that our, recognizing what our sins have done, Father God. Just breaking our relationship with you, Father. And, and Father, we ask today for the forgiveness of sins, Lord. We ask, uh, we ask for, for help with sins that are in our lives, Father God. Uh, if anyone is out there, Lord, if anyone is out there with sin in their life, Father God, we ask today for conviction, Lord. Examine me today, Lord. If there's sin in my life, Lord, convict me, Lord. Convict us, Lord. If there's sin in our life, convict us, Lord, and help us to turn back to the path of righteousness, to turn and live a life that will glorify and honor you and show to others the love that you have shown to us. Father God, we praise you. Father God, we glorify and honor you. Father, we praise your holy name. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Praise your holy name. Father God, thank you. Lord, Father, we we ask for your help, Lord. We ask for wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom through your Holy Spirit. Help us to understand the science, the scientific arguments that are being used to challenge your creation. Give us wisdom, Lord, to help us understand the science. Give us wisdom so that we may be an effective witness for you, Lord God. That, and, and Lord, I ask for boldness to speak. Lord, help us to recognize how lost people are around us. Lord, help us to recognize the, tr- the truth that we know. Father God, help us to recognize that we are in possession of a great truth that the world around us needs to save them. Help us to be bold in our witness, Father to speak the name of Jesus, to talk about God at every opportunity. When we see people on the street, when we see them in the supermarket, Lord, help us to be a witness for you. Help us to speak with boldness in our beliefs in the creation, with boldness in our beliefs that the Son of God came, died for our sins, and was resurrected from the dead. Father God, help us to be a witness for you. Give us the boldness that we need to speak, Father God. Praise you, Lord, and we thank you. We pray all things in Jesus' name. Amen.